episode five of the Tying Toolbox. Our topic today is hackle. One of the most important fly tying materials that there is for every type of fly, whether you're tying nymphs, dries, or streamers, or even saltwater patterns, they all will use hackle. We wanted to spend a little bit of time reviewing what we can do with hackle. So there are two types of hackle. This is what you're gonna use more for nymphs or dry flies. We can see that if we prep this feather and gently pull these fibers rearwards, we can see they're very spiky and pokey. That's great for being able to grab the water surface uh, and it'll help really help the fly float. We can see this is a little different. This is schloppen, more in use for streamers. But if we kind of do the exact same movement, we can see the fibers really stick together a lot more. This will help add a lot more bulk to a streamer when it's wrapped. One of the most important tools for working with hackle would be a pair of hackle pliers that you could have. That way you could hook on to either the stem or the tip and be able to spin the hackle. With the scissors, these are going to be your all-purpose scissors. They're going to have a, usually are going to be a little wider mouth. This is what you want to use anytime you're making a rough cut, whether you're cutting feathers off of a cape or materials off of a, or cutting hair off of a hide, you'd want to use your more all-purpose scissors because you want to keep these scissors sharp. So these are an arrow point scissor. You can see the uh, jaws are a little shorter and we can see how fine of a tip these have on them. These scissors will eventually dull, but they are not cheap scissors. So you wanna try to get as much use out of them as you can by only using them when you're trimming cuts that you're going to see on the outside of the fly. So making rough cuts, making fine cuts. We wanted to show you the different types and the use. Now, I know I have a streamer hook in here. I am going to be showing you the smaller hackle on a streamer hook just uh, so that you could see how it operated. To be able to get ready to tie in, we're going to hold the tip and we're going to pull backwards on these fibers to expose a little bit of the stem. That's going to give us a really good tie-in point so that we can tie that stem down. So, step one is we're going to start our thread just like we have in our previous series. You would likely already have had some things tied in by this point to be able to, you're gonna start wrapping this hackle around. We're gonna take our prepped feather so that we can get right down to that stem and get that tied in nice and tight. Take our rough pair of scissors and trim it out. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is, because I do have a full rotary vise, is you're gonna do a half hitch right over the top there. Lock that in and we're gonna set that in our bobbin cradle. If you don't have a rotary vise, run your thread all the way out to the end so that you, to give yourself the most amount of room and then do that half hitch so that you can have the most amount of room to spin and pass that feather around the hook. If you do have a rotary vise, it makes it a lot easier to be able to spin that hook so that you can see both sides. And we're going to wrap this forwards. So we're keeping the feather perpendicular to the hook to make sure that the fibers spread out nice and evenly. I also like to use my other finger in here to keep a little bit of extra tension right there as it goes onto the hook. We're gonna continue spinning. If you find it hard to hold, hackle can be pretty difficult to hold. A pair of hackle pliers can come in very handy to be able to help hold the stem, especially once you start running down towards the end of a, a piece of hackle. We're just gonna keep wrapping that on to build up what, however we're using it. A lot of times this, if you're doing a dry fly that might go under over some dubbing. If you're doing a woolly booger, might go over some chenille. So could be potentially on top of another, uh, another material. As you get towards the end, we're gonna unhook our bobbin cradle here. You want to make a wrap on the other, on the inside of the hackle pliers. So make one wrap around and trade, go underneath and flip those. I would make two to three wraps on the back side. Now this is probably one that would be really helpful for you to have a super sharp, very nice pair of scissors to be able to get in here and make a super fine and accurate cut 
and this is this pair of scissors I would never go in and cut wire or anything else with so that I could keep these as sharp as possible. So then you could come in and clean up some of these hackle fi fibers that are a little loose and extraneous that got kind of out of, that kind of got out of control. Last year, you're just going to finish wrapping that off. So we can see this would be a great dry fly hackle. These really nice fine fibers are going to be able to help float a fly very well, be able to grab the water and hold that surface tension instead of just going straight through it like a nymph might, but makes a really cool collar. And this kind of hackle is great for any of your trout flies that you're using. One note about picking dry fly hackles is that they can be extremely expensive to very cheap. It is one of the largest ranges of natural materials that you can get from a price point. So I really recommend starting out with a package that's right around that $15 to $25 range, averaging probably about $20. That's going to get you a good hackle. There's not a lot of need unless you're tying artistic flies to go much more expensive than that. But if you go too cheap on your hackle, it's not going to work right. It's going to be pretty inefficient. Your flies may not look the best, which that might be perfectly fine with you. But I don't want you to get discouraged on using hackle and tying by going with a really cheap option. Next, we're going to talk about schloppen. I wanted to show you guys the difference in how schloppen will look palmered versus the dry fly hackle that we just did. So I've got an olive piece of schlop in here. Again, we're going to prep this by grabbing the tip and pulling these fibers backwards to expose the stem. That's going to give me a good spot to come in and trim that out and tie that in. Yet again, I'm going to make a half hitch and use this rotary function on this vise. Um, again, taking your pair of hackle pliers can be really helpful. Those stems are pretty small, and if you've got fat sausage fingers like I do, it can be really hard to hold those things. We're going to help pull these fibers rearwards as we wrap these forwards. Just making nice, consistent thread wraps, but keeping in mind that we're going to kind of go slow so that we can make sure the fibers are getting nice and distributed and that they're not getting caught up underneath each other. This is the exact same technique here, so I'm kind of going fast. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of the difference in look between hackle and schloppen. This could be another great spot to use those super sharp pair of scissors that you don't really cut anything else with. Just really fine scissors for that. Those scissors are not super cheap, so I like to keep them as sharp as I can for as long as I can. As we see, that's a very different look and profile those fibers are sticking together a little bit and it makes a lot more of a body for a fly. This is a really popular uh, material for use in streamers as it builds a little bit more of a body, but this hackle is extremely lightweight, does not hold very much water at all, makes your casting very easy. The last technique that is very popular, again with streamers, that we would use schloppen for or hackle is to create a tail. So I would pick two very similar pieces of schloppen, both in kind of size and diameter. So I've got those picked out here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take into account, notice how these feathers kind of will bend one way and you'll have a natural bend of the feather coming to the left or to the right, depending upon how you're looking at it. So, so this would come into account as you're deciding on how you're going to tie your tail in. If you tie your tail in where they curve inwards, you're going to get more of a sleek and slender tail, versus if you flip it and you tie it in where the tail is pointing outwards, you're going to have a little more movement and a little more swimming action. That's the first thing to do. Next is we need to measure out how long we want our tail to be. So I might want to have a tail on this fly, say this long. The first thing you're going to do is get that size measured out grab with your left hand and pull with your right to expose those fibers. Next, grab those fibers and remove them, just pulling backwards on the stem to totally expose the stem. 
So one of the biggest tips I can give you on tying in schloppen or hackle tails is that this stem can be very tricky to work with unless you crush it. The stem is almost like a McDonald's straw, if you will. So if we go to tie this thing in, it's not going to sit very flat. So if we take a pair of hemostats, and I just keep a standard pair of uh, regular fishing pliers, that I, same ones I use for when I go fishing. And we're going to crush that stem to give it a good spot to tie in at. Get that loose wrap around the edge and then start locking it in. That way the tail sits nice and wide instead of wanting to spin on the hook for you. You just want to repeat that exact same process on the other side to get the second tail tied in. And there we have it. So that's how you would tie in tails for a larger streamer. And this could be an extremely good tail for a streamer as we can see they're very lax. So it will give a lot of movement and really cool swimming, lifelike movement while you're uh, stripping that fly or in the current, as well as it also has a nice cool taper that is already tapered just like a minnow. It's not something that you have to go in here and trim out. Appreciate you guys watching these. Hopefully they're helpful. If you are liking these videos, make sure you like and comment below. Tell us what you like or what other videos you wanna see. Stay tuned for episode six, where we're gonna talk about the zombies. Nothing that impresses women more than a really large pack of swapping. It's a true.